It is quite some time ago that I tested a flip phone, so Xiaomi released a new one and I thought, eh, why not checking it out? So this is the Xiaomi Mix Flip uh, quick unboxing and first impressions video, so let's get started. Included in the Xiaomi Mix Flip box, powered by Leica and uh, Xiaomi's Hyper OS, you can find those here. This is an import device that I got from Trading Shenzhen, and Trading Shenzhen has this nifty little checkbox system here where they test every device if it's working before sending it out to you, so you can really trust them that they ship out a working device. And uh, yeah, I got this device from Trading Shenzhen. So if you're interested in this, uh, I will put a link and even like a small discount code below. Anyway, what you will find inside, of course, is the phone itself, the Xiaomi Mix Flip wrapped in plastic, as you can see here. And uh, we will unbox it shortly. And then we have this little envelope with, of course, the SIMI jack tool. And there seems to be a little case for the Mix Flip. And this is a dual, uh, case so it comes in white because the phone itself is in white let's get out of the there we go it's a very interesting kind of case because it comes in two parts this is the part that comes over the outer display and this is the one that comes below as you can see this one is solid and yeah it's a hard plastic shell feels nice and yeah looks white just like the phone itself which is quite cool then we have a 67 watt charger there with the Chinese brick, but of course you will get like a small adapter as well for plugging in into EU sockets. Then we have the USB A to C cable, I think it is. Xiaomi usually uses A to C. Yes, A to C cable there as well. And uh, yeah, some paperwork usually comes in here as well, as you can see, that describes the phone, the power button and so on, but it's in Chinese, of course. That's it, basically, for what's inside of the box. Looking at the device itself, what we can see here is this uh, nice little paper material, and you can see here already black and white. This looks pretty nice. Let's unbox it. There we go. Uh, take it out of the wrap. There we can see this gorgeous screen with almost no crease that you can see visibly. There's a little bit slightly visible, but it's pretty, pretty good and well done by Xiaomi for the first kind of flip phone. And uh, yeah, here we have this outer screen. You can see we have the white version with the Xiaomi logo engraved there. And uh, then we have the outer screen with the cameras. I think it's two times 50 megapixel cameras there. Um, and yeah, this outer kind of screen, you can see it like bends towards the edges, just like the flagship uh, device, the 14 Pro or the 14 Ultra. And uh, yeah, there we have a camera inside there and uh, pretty clean edges. There are, I think, microphone holes there. Here's the fingerprint scanner and power button. And here is the volume control, pretty solid. On the other side, basically nothing. On the bottom, we have the uh, dual nano SIM slot, USB type C. I think it's sadly only 2.0 if I'm not mistaken, but I will correct this if I'm wrong down below you see the real specs one speaker and there the earpiece also acts as a speaker there's no speaker on the top and uh, yeah let's turn on this bad boy and we will see if it has any juice there we go Xiaomi here and also here on the outer screen as well Running on this device is uh, Xiaomi's HypoS uh, version 1070, but 1080 is already, already available in the pipeline, as you see there. It is roughly using 31 gigabytes here of storage. Uh, Trading Shenzhen is debloating the device, so it is already removing most of the bloatware software, Chinese bloatware software, and installing conveniently for you already the Play Store, DRM Info, Safety Net, and Gboard, so you can just start 
uh, using the device without any hiccups. The screen is a beautiful 6.86 inch AMOLED screen with 120Hz refresh rate and 3000 3, nits peak brightness. Of course, probably outside you will not reach 3000 nits only if you're re using HDR mode or something like this, but at least you can reach it on the inner display, but also on the outer display. And the outer display is a four inch kind of display and I think only yeah, full HD kind of resolution. Anyway, what you can here see is the default menu with some applications that you can use on the outer screen. And uh, yeah, the cameras are neatly integrated in here and the display is wrapping around this, as you see, very, very, very nice. What I noticed as soon as you do an operation that is not supported on the outer screen, like the update process, it asks me to open up and use the inner screen. Let's do it with one hand, use my long fingernail and yeah, flip it open. And as you can see here, then the update process begins. It's downloading the new update and hopefully installing it soon so I can test out everything here on the brand new update. Checking out the case a little bit more, what you will see is uh, that we have like uh, an upper and a lower part. The lower part is pretty easy. You can see also the color is almost matching there. I think this might be a little bit colder white and this is a bit warmer white there. From the feeling here, this here is a little bit slippery feeling. This is a little less slippery feeling. So this you can either just slide on or you just put it on like a normal case you would do as a lower but lower case. The upper case, however, is yeah, you can slip it on as well, but you can see those little stripes here, those blue ones that indicate that this is some sticky glue that we have here that uh, will glue on top because otherwise it doesn't have much to hold on to. And uh, yeah, let's put it on maybe without undoing the sticky glue. This is how it will look like. And uh, then you will see, yeah, it is not really protecting uh, much of the outer display, but you see that it is definitely raised here, especially around the camera bump so that it should be able to protect the outer display and the camera bumps a little bit more. But this also means with its raising here that it might be a little bit, let's put it on a flat surface. Uh, is it? No, it's not a little bit wobbly, but just a tiny bit wobbly only. So they really managed to do a good job. As you can see here, the sides are all protected. Usually they don't protect the sides as well. Um, yeah, we can all this little flap here, but otherwise the fingerprint reader is free and there's enough space also for reaching the volume buttons. And yeah, you can use here your fingers as well on the outer screen to um, do stuff without any issues. You can see it's working just fine. And the rest is protected as well. The only thing that is not protected is the hinge. Here you can see the nice hinge detail with the Leica branding. Usually you have like the Xiaomi branding or, or should have the Xiaomi branding or the Huawei or Honor branding or whatever you like to have here. But here they have prominently put on the Leica branding because this two lenses here, these two lenses and uh, yeah, are Leica branded. So we have the same ability as with the more expensive and um, yeah, bigger brothers, the Xiaomi 14, 14 Pro and 14 Ultra here on this device. In white, it looks pretty, pretty cool, especially with the dark and white combination there. So very, very nice looking. And this is how it should fit uh, with your Xiaomi Mix Flip. You can see that the inner display is of course also protected by raising the lips a little bit, but just a tiny bit because you have to still be able to close it. And uh, yeah, you can see that there is little bit of like a raising here as well like an opening and this is meant for the speaker there earpiece and the bottom is free as well so yes you can even in in a closed state have access to the nano uh, nano sim cards there a USB-C should be no issues also with larger adapters and of course the speaker is uh, yeah there as well free from any blockage which is Quite nice. What do they have here? It looks like a little dot there. Not sure what they're using this for. But we have such a little dot there. Yes, this is the mix flip with the case on. 
There is of course a fingerprint and uh, what I found very interesting is that we have like this capacitive button and we should use like this kind of gesture to scan in the fingerprint. So let's do it. And you can see it did already scan a lot. So instead of like tap and holding, you only have to swipe three times and it then saves the fingerprint and should be able then to unlock the device with the fingerprint quite quickly. So this is a bit unusual because usually on those side mounted fingerprints I just have to hold, tap and hold. But here I have to just swipe three times and it reads my fingerprint then and can properly unlock almost every time. And there's of course the possibility to use a face as uh, the possibility to unlock the device. In this case yeah, I have to read everything what's uh, what is written here and hit agree and then it's a 2D face unlock so keep your face inside the frame and it will then add this face successfully I hit done and now I can also unlock with my face and you will see that there's a little check mark going up that means like it's unlocked maybe I can use directly unlocking so it will directly unlock then as you can see here quite quick as soon as it gets my face it is unlocking so biometrics here on this Xiaomi Mix Flip are working fine and specialty for this screen you also have to unlock you can use either your thumb to unlock or you can use your face because the face data can also be used with one of those cameras there so there you go quite quick as soon as it sees my face it's unlocking here as well I thought this might be useful for some people who are new to Chinese devices, especially Chinese Hyper OS devices. I'm setting up things here for me to work. So first of all, I'm not using the Gboard. I like that uh, Trading Gen is installing it because for most people this might be enough, but I'm, like, I'm used to use uh, SwiftKey. So what I have to do is go to Manage Keyboards, turn SwiftKey on, and then current keyboard, I can change it to a Microsoft SwiftKey, hit OK and it will switch inputs then. But what is more annoying for some people is probably the secure keyboard that we have as well. That is a feature that will yeah, give you a specialized secure keyboard, which is a Xiaomi's own keyboard, but it has some difficulties or yeah, annoyances like not switching uh, from numbers back to letters and uh, from um, yeah, capital letters to lower letters and so on. So, I just have it disabled. I don't like it because it's like a con convenience issue for me. And uh, we have some enhanced keyboard options there as well if you want to have them turned on and off, but I'm not sure how well this will work. More important, I think, for people who are using Google services is autofill service. So what you can do here is you can ch uh, choose the service that is using for autofill and you have the possibility to use Google there as well. So Google will... Um, yeah, take your passwords that you stored at Google and lock you into various different apps if you're using Google for this matter. But you can also have some other autofill services like Brave, for example, which I like to use. Or if you have Firefox or other autofill services, you can add services as well here. It will go to the Google Play Store and you have various different other ones here. One password I think is allowed as well and some other password managers there. I choose Google here, hit OK, and then I can use my stored Google passwords. And I can show you how easy it is with the stored Google password. For example, if I open up Netflix for the first time, it knows my account. I click OK and it's signing me in already, which is pretty convenient and normal on global devices. But it's also possible here on this HyperOS powered Chinese device. And just want to check out if uh, White Wine Level 1 is also supported in Netflix because we have White Wine Level 1 here. Yes, Full HD L1, even HDR10 and Dolby Vision are supported. So this is also an indicator that this device will get glob global release as well. You can see here White Wine Level 1 supported. What I could not make run is the safety net test. For some reason it is failing all the time. So might be an issue that needs still to be fixed here but a potential issue then with the Google Wallet. I will try this out, of course, as well. So I was able to log into Google Wallet and it doesn't show me anything that my device is rooted or anything else. So my PayPal, I was able to add here and probably payment will work as well. So not sure what's going on with the um, yeah, certification issue there. 
Installing uh, APKs, especially third-party APKs, can be a little bit frustrating on HyperOS devices. You can see lots of Chinese text here. Basically, what it's saying that uh, F-Droid is not a secure uh, source for installing an application and the only thing you can do is cancel or say yeah okay not installing and then if you hit here there's an allow once option that you can use this is the easiest way to do it and then you can install applications and use your fingerprint to uh, allow installing Nextcloud from F-Droid for example here. Yeah. The reason I installed Netflix is to check out my demo track to see how good the speakers are sounding so let's put them into landscape I think they sound good. It is a little bit weak on the bass side for sure, but it gets pretty loud. It is not too shrill. There are a few shrill high notes sometimes, uh, but otherwise I think for a flip phone, this is not bad at all. So the default setting for the outer display is like this. You have some applications here, like for example the calculator. If I agree to it, I can just calculate. You can see it's only taking half of the screen or like three quarters of the screen and one quarter is being used here, uh, especially the, the camera one, for some widgets. Like it shows you the time and the date and you can also have your weather there or you can have your last used application. So I can just go in here to the weather application or if I want to and fancy enough go to the wallet application and uh, you can see get like for applications that are not Xiaomi ones this little uh, warning that it is not um, working properly properly and as you can see it is working fine and I have the possibility then to use also my Google wallet here from this and of course I have also the ability to add new applications to this outer screen and uh, you cannot do it from the outer screen itself you have to flip the device open for doing so and go to your settings and there have you you have the outer screen setting with lock screen screen uh, that you can set up here to whatever lock screen you like to have there you have also some nice animations like for example this puma or leo the leopard it's not a puma it's the leopard actually i can click on add and then when i click ok here and uh, open this device up you can see I have Leo the Leopard there which is quite nice uh, but let's go back to the uh, settings and let's go back we have wallpaper settings that we can set up it's using the theme engine from Xiaomi of course then we have widgets that we can set up so besides the widgets that we have here like the time and uh, the weather we have some others that we can add here like for example we have, can add like um, another clock style another calendar style with your appointments health information the music widget and uh, the reasons widget that we already have maybe in the future there are some others coming in as well the other screen apps allow you to add more apps and available apps as you can see here are those me fitness me home and google wallet for example so i can add google wallet in here and then don't even open up the app what i cannot add is netflix for example it's not available here and some other applications that i have installed i think notes are not available here as well which is also a bummer why is notes not available so we have only a few apps there some apps aren't optimized for the use of outer screen some features and display effects may not be supported is written here so i really wish in the future they add maybe the option to allow us to use all apps there even if they don't work so like agree you agree that yeah we get a worse experience of some apps that don't work but these are the outer screen options that you find on the mix flip what i forgot to show you of course you have options like the swipe options first of all to see your notifications and then to go and turn on your wi-fi bluetooth mobile data choose your uh, uh, the ringtone volume and the brightness of the display go into airplane mode and some other options there as well like turning on the flashlight but it warns you before you do it to turn the device around and you can say not now uh, 
but yeah it warns you to turn it around and if you turn it around you can see it detecting this and then turning it really on which is quite nice otherwise yeah it will uh, turn off when you press one of the buttons pretty cool design i would say especially if you need a flashlight in the dark of course you can run youtube on the outer screen and you also have a keyboard by default when you go in here for example what it does is trying to use your voice as keyboard so tech view but it's not always working <laughs> uh, so you can switch to a real keyboard and then you can choose which one you want and they're very different ones but those are the Xiaomi own keyboard so if I go to EN I get like a real keyboard here uh, but I don't have swipe so I have to type in stuff manually and if I type in uh, tech view behind the scenes for example and uh, then I have this video here I can play it back and I can even go into full screen but you can see it's not taking the full screen but only a part of the screen but this is uh, yeah possible with this one also to watch some videos here on the uh, outer screen there are some applications that are optimized for this uh, flexible OLED screen that we have here and you will see that also the wallpaper is reacting to you folding or unfolding the device depending even how hard you fold it is like folding and unfolding very nice effect on the wallpaper some applications are op all also optimized let's go in here skip the questionnaire and go straight to the video and i can go into this flex mode here and have the possibility to yeah, scroll forward 10 seconds uh, pause or playback such things are working there as well and of course there's also the camera app that has a flex mode so if i go in here you can see i have this flex mode and i can even use it like uh, especially for video uh, in this uh, camcorder like mode where i have here the buttons that i can press and then have a very stable camcorder like mode and talking about the camera application we have to talk about the cameras here on the back like i said two 50 megapixel cameras one main camera sensor and one 2x zoom and i think we should try out those cameras to see which one of those is working better and how good they are for vlogging and taking pictures so uh, there will be of course a camera comparison and um, camera review basically with my other flip phone that i have but uh, this is a first impressions of the camera system so i'm now using the mix flip with the outer screen in the folded state I have an external microphone attached if I go out of the sun you don't see the lens flare otherwise there's lots of lens flare so with this large outer screen four inch I can see myself very clearly and this is I think a very very good vlogging kind of device uh, for this matter because it's very compact small the only thing that's sticking out there is the wireless microphone by the way how good is the sound here is it better than on the xiaomi 14 and 14 pro where we have a slightly distorted or highly compressed kind of sound in this sense that there's a lot of uh, uh, noise filtering and wind filtering going on i hope xiaomi fix it at least on the 14 ultra that i was recording previously or earlier there was no issue since a few updates so hopefully on the mix flip uh, there's also not such issue how are the colors here how good is stabilization and does it even record 4k in this uh, compressed or in this folded state because some devices they just go and record only 1080p in this state which is then not so ideal for vlogging if you want to vlog in 2024 in the highest quality otherwise i think it looks quite nice here i have the possibility i think can i zoom out and zoom in I can zoom in to 2x hopefully it's using the 2x sensor as well uh, i cannot zoom out though there's no ultra wide angle available but i think 24 millimeter here with stabilization added is okayish barely okayish for the vlogging folks i can hold it a little bit further away and then it fits in a little bit more and it's also okay for vlogging because the device is so small and uh, so lightweight it shouldn't be any issues at all so yeah this is the uh, video when you're using it in a folded state and what do you think about the quality here stabilization colors and so on 
And as you saw, it was recording in a weird kind of squarish format. Um, I'm not sure what's going on here. Nevertheless, 16 by 9 now on the front facing camera, 4K on the front facing camera, because this 32 megapixel sensor can also record 4K on the front facing camera. So this might be also very, very good for vlogging. I'm not sure it has autofocus. I don't think it has autofocus. Of course not. It has auto exposure, but no autofocus here on the front facing camera on the Xiaomi Mix Flip. Um, overexposure, yeah, still a problem with Xiaomi devices, especially also with the flicks flip um what do i have there no it's a i thought it's like a switch to the back facing cameras button but no it's not it's just a button to take a, a photo if i want to uh, eight megapixel but who cares um let's try out the normal kind of video mode with the back facing cameras to see if the quality is better there and now i'm recording with uh, the yeah normal main camera sensor seeing myself still on the flip phone but now it is flipped open because there's a button that allows me to um, switch from the selfie mode to using the back facing cameras which is much much better there but i have to have this device open the cool thing is here that the buttons for start stopping uh, recording and taking a shot are then just moving up to the camera area right next to my thumb which is quite interesting a uh, thumb to my fingers actually uh, which is quite interesting depending on how you hold it. I will show it to you quickly here with my um, with my Xiaomi 14 Ultra as you can see here. So there and there and there are the buttons quite nice and nifty indeed. And this is something that is pretty pretty cool um, for vlogging then as well because you can see yourself and you, it's using the better cameras, it's using 4K um, using very good quality hopefully also the mic quality is nice there has some lens flare effects let's go into the sun let's see how good hdr is yeah hdr is turned off yeah. <laughs> but uh, you can record also in hdr if you want to but also sdr has i think nice hdr ish kind of effects now with the harsh sun pretty black face probably with lots of shadows everywhere let's go back into the shades it's also very very hot so what do you think about this one here in terms of quality here? Of course, still the ability to zoom in if I want to. There's no button, but I can zoom in 2x. Can even further? No, only 2x. Not even sure if it's switching to the 2x separate lens there because I don't see lens switching there. It might be just a crop of the main sensor there. Uh, 4K, yeah, recording. Um, let's see if I can in that flipped state somehow tweak the aspect ratio so it's not like this weird squarish kind of video that we see or saw earlier let's see if i can change it and yes i can switch the aspect ratio instead of full screen which is using the resolution of the screen i can go to 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 depending on how you want to do it and then i have also the possibility to see myself however only in this tiny slit kind of uh, window and it's not using the area above uh, with the um, with the let me show it to you with the camera sensors there uh, as you see there it's only using a part of the screen not everything it's not ideal i would say but at least it offers me 4k recording which is quite nice in this very hot kind of environment might be not very very good uh, because it might overheat quite quickly here with 4k 30 frames per second recording i don't want to even think about 4k 60 frames per second recording uh, but it is possible to do it and then it might be very interesting as a vlogging device so yeah let's check out some photos there and tell me in the comments meanwhile what do you think about the vlogging capabilities of this device here in 4k 30 frames per second Let's check out the photos. The first one here, by the way, I'm using the internal mics just so they can hear. The mics can also sound good, at least the internal mics. Uh, 47 mm 2x zoom here. Uh, it's nice, rich and detailed, I would say. It has nice bokeh, but nothing to write home about, I would say. And there's also two times that you can see some little worms or whatever that is on some of the leaves on my pond. This is four times still detailed and nice. But if you go like to 10 times already, you can see it is falling apart a little bit. So I think the sweet spot might be four or five times and 30 times. Yeah, if you go to 100%, forget about it. 
And what the macro cam, super macro mod, I think is utilizing the 2x zoom here. I might be wrong, but very, very detailed as you can see here of this little flowers stem. You can see the pollen and, and other interesting stuff there. And even those little flowers I could get in focus even though i couldn't get any closer because they would go out of auto focus then but you get a nice bokeh and uh, leica authentic is the um, color profile of choice that i chose here this is four times zoom you can see four times zoom i think is yeah still the sweet spot for the longest zoom range that is still uh, very acceptable because it's two time crop on the 50 megapixel 10 times it's okay as long as you don't zoom in. If you zoom in, you can see mm, it's falling apart already in terms of detail levels there. But it's nevertheless amazing that a flip phone has this ability. And then we go and have the front uh, facing camera of the, uh, the inner display. And you can see it's also doing a quite nice job there. Also the, the HDR is very good, though it doesn't show it on the previous screen. But of course you can also use the main camera sensors and the outer screen and especially indoors it makes a lot of sense to use it as you get lots and lots of detail with less and less noise and uh, HDR is also working fine but again the preview window shows an exposure preview <laughs> shows a, in the window the exposure completely wrong overexposed but you get nice uh, object separation even without using the portrait mode with a little bit of bokeh there in the background with the larger kind of main camera sensor here. And it's wide enough that I don't miss so much the ultra wide camera here, but maybe the tether sensor should be a better one, like 3.2 times, like on the Xiaomi 14, then I could live with it. And then I could explain to others, okay, it's very, it's a portrait lens, but a 2X, I would say, hmm, it's a bit weird. Yes, of course, in between 2X and 4X, you get like the sensor crop in, so it, gives you almost lossless kind of quality there and it's good quality and probably one of the better zooms on a flip phone but still something that uh, i find a bit of weird here as a decision from xiaomi but what do you think about the photos so far this is just the first impressions i will do a dedicated camera comparison with the huawei p50 pocket yeah it's already older but it is very good nevertheless and uh, yeah we'll see which one we'll get the crown here in terms of photography and videography. Of course you can prop it up as well as you see here and then you can use a voice shutter or a palm shutter to trigger a nice shot ideal for selfies. If you want your significant other to see her or him as well while you're taking photos you can trigger this button here which will turn on a preview on the outer screen so while taking photos of him or her they can see uh, the photo already on this little screen or they can see at least how you align the photo and can correct you if you're wrong the mix flip features one of the largest batteries ever put into a flip phone 4780 milliamp per hour and when we check out the battery stats it will hold and yeah last for a long time however i think they still have to optimize this a little bit especially when you're gaming or using the camera a lot the cpu and sock are overheating a little bit and this is then resulting in a bit of less battery life than i would expect it but it is on par i would say definitely with the find and free flip that i also tested out last time i checked out a flip phone so this is good news here and the other good news is that you can charge this device up pretty quickly with a 67 watt included charger overall the xiaomi mix flip is a pretty pretty good flip phone for the first generation device that xiaomi is releasing here we have some limitations here and there, but overall the battery life is good, solid, I would say. I could be a bit better yeah, when you read the specs of this large battery. We have the fastest Snapdragon chipset on the market. So this is the fastest flip phone for sure on the market as well, as it is not currently 
uh, clocking down the CPU so much. So even the Galaxy uh, Flip uh, is losing here in terms of benchmarks, but only if the benchmarks run through, because if it's too hot, then it overheats quite quickly and then you are running into trouble. Cameras are fine, but I would rather have the 3.2x from the Xiaomi 14 instead of just a 2x zoom here, which gives me a bit more flexibility also with zooming in. But here up to five times you get like a good quality zoom still. Ultra wide angle missing, I don't really miss so much because the main camera sensor 23 millimeter is also pretty wide, wide enough. Perfect vlogging device if Xiaomi would not screw up the default settings for software, but of course you can change it and then you can use it in your hand and just vlog like this, which is a very, very nice and nifty feature because you can see yourself. Though you have to change it to 16 by nine and then only a quarter of this larger outer screen is really usable. And this is also true for most of the apps. Only some Xiaomi special apps are able to use it. Like for example, I could use it like this and then the keyboard will be displayed down below in full screen, basically utilizing the whole four inch um, width here of this display but it would not work for third-party applications still. Also, some third-party applications are not running on the outer screen, so this is something that Xiaomi has to improve as well. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this device. Yeah, wireless charging would be nice to have. Battery life a little bit longer would be nice to have as well. Maybe they can downclock the CPU a bit to get a bit of better battery life. Otherwise, this is a very good flip phone and a very good competitor for the Samsung Galaxy Flip and the Honor Magic Flip in terms of hardware. In terms of software, I think they have to jump up a little bit there, but they have some little nice little gimmicks there already uh, that are very nice, like this Otter or Leopard and so on. And uh, yeah, very, very nice device for sure. And if you can get it for a good price, this is definitely something to look forward to. If you have some questions regarding the um, Xiaomi Mix Flip, then you write it down in the comment section. Uh, of course, I will do a camera comparison with the Huawei P50 Pocket. And yeah, we will see which one will be camera king there. Until the next time, bye.